بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أي الله حبت في الله continue on our study of encouraging harmony and wisdom in da'wah and warning from discord by Sheikh Rabi bin Hadi al-Madkhali hafizhullahu ta'ala we reached a portion of the treaties where the Sheikh said he said in the past and he's illustrating this wisdom and hikmah and da'wah that we need to have he said in the past I traveled to Sudan and I traveled to Port Sudan and the youth of Ansar al-Sunnah received me there may Allah bless you they said, O oh, Sheikh, we would like you to turn your attention to a certain point. So I said, go ahead. They said, say whatever you like. Say Allah wa ta'ala said, say the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, may Allah bless you and refute whatever you want from the issues of innovations and misguidance that they have from making dua to other than Allah, making sacrifices to other than Allah, and swearing by other than Allah and so on. But do not say such and such a group or say such and such a sect, or such and such a sheikh. In other words, do not name their sects, their groups, and their scholars. Do not say the Tijaniya sect, or the Burhaniya sect, or any of their scholars. Just teach them the correct aqidah, and you will see that they will accept the truth from you, inshallah. So I said, okay, and I followed this way, and I found that they accepted the truth from me. Allah Ta'ala says, and do not insult those they invoke other than Allah, lest they insult Allah in enmity and have enmity without knowledge. In enmity without knowledge. If you start insulting their scholars and saying such and such or so and so is misguided and so and so is a deviant, you will chase them away. They will run away from you and you will have a sin upon you because you chase the people away, Allahu Akbar. Chasing the people away from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not a small affair. This is why it's so important. And, and you see the wisdom. If we look at those principles and we gain the fiqh fiddin about not being hasty with judging the people. Also having wisdom, even dealing with people who have mistakes. Don't be afraid to go call the people to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Many of the ulama, they speak about this issue. And I personally asked at least seven different mashayikh from Hail to Medina, some of our mashayikh in Medina, and to in Yemen about this issue. And all of them boiled down to the same uh, conclusion to summarize what they said. They all had some different details, but in summary they said, Mabni al al wa mafsada that you look at this issue, if you want to call Ahl Bid'ah, you want to go, if you give a lecture to Ahl Bid'ah in their masjid, meaning that you have the knowledge, you're a da'i, you're calling to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you've been invited to go to a masjid of Ahl Bid'ah. Should you just run and say, no, you're making the numbers bigger, and this and that and the other? No, you look at these issues, you look at the wisdom, you have wisdom. And what is further proof for those among some of our brothers who tend to be very harsh and have one position about this issue. This is, the, this is what Sheikh Rabi did. What are you going to say after that? Because some of our brothers, they own, they take from the Sheikh to such a high extent that as if he's the only Sheikh. And I know people personally, so I'm not speaking from my desires or slandering anyone, but I know people who are like this, who uh, who blind follow the Sheikh. And, he, and, and the Sheikh is one of our great Mashaykh of Ahlul Sunnah. But we don't blind follow him or anyone. And he himself, Hafidullah Ta'ala, went to Sudan, went to the Sufi Masajid, and gave dawah in their Masajid. So what are you going to say? That if someone knows, we're not saying for anyone, we're saying for those people who have some knowledge. If he's a Dai, he should, he should have knowledge if he's of something before and to know what he's calling to. So having this kind of wisdom, instead of shutting out the doors, I asked my Sheikh, Sheikh Ibrahim Rahayli, Hafidullah Ta'ala, about this issue. He said, I said, Sheikh, our scholars, they have a difference of opinion on this. And the people are saying this and this and this. What, what about this issue? And the Sheikh said, it doesn't matter what the people said. He said, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لِيَهْدِي اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجَلًا نَوَاهِدٍ خَيْرًا لَقَمِنْ حُمْرًا نَعْمٍ the Prophet said that if one person is guided by your hand, 
this is better for you than the red camels. That's the statement of the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So who cares what this guy who's a da'i or this guy who's a, supposedly a student of knowledge or a ta'il al ilm or whatever that, that says something? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, maybe, you know, if, if one person is guided by your hand, it's better than you for the red camels. And this is the, be the beautiful thing. This is what Sheikh Rabi did. And he, as he said, what did he say? And I followed this way and I found that they accepted the truth from me and, and accepted the truth from me. And he said, if you, if you start insulting their scholars and saying such and such and so and so is misguided and so and so is deviant, you will chase them away. When the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent Mu'ad uh, Mu'ad and Musa and Abu Musa, he said to them, make things easy and do not make things difficult and give glad tidings and do not chase people away. That's the hikmah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is to have this, this gentleness and, and not to chase the people away, but invite the people to good to, with hikmah and good preaching and wisdom. So this is from the ways that contain ease as well as good tidings and it does not chase anybody away. By Allah, I did not enter a masjid except that I saw the people smiling at me. Look at this, amongst the Sufis. Neither was I able to leave a masjid except that the people gathered around me inviting me to their homes. So the leaders of the Sufis, the Shayateen, they saw the danger of this way. So their leaders, they saw, they peeped the game. They said, hey, this is devi this deviance, this danger. They said, so the leaders of the Sufis, the Shayateen, they saw the danger of this way. They saw the danger of this Minhaj and Dawah. So they gathered and prepared a speech with which they would refute me. They advertised that the next day there would be a speech given by me in a big field. So we gathered there and I gave the lecture. When I had finished, their leader got up and added to what I spoke about, saying that it was permissible to make dua to other than Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to sacrifice to other than Allah, and so on and, uh, and so on from the forms of shirk. He strengthened his arguments of misguidance by proofs which are either misunderstood or false. And that's very important, Ahabati Fillah. This is called Istanbat bi Adilla. This right here has to do with, uh, you'll have it in uh, the uh, Asul of Tafsir, you'll have it in, 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 in Asul of Fiqh in these sciences. How to use Adilla, not every ayat, you can't say uh, someone will, will, will try to use an ayat to support their desires, but that might not be the meaning of the ayat or the, the situation in which you can apply that ayat. This is called istinbat, istinbat, how you use that adilla or, or what that adilla is properly used for. And that's very important. So these people of misguidance, these Sufis, were making improper istinbat. They were, uh, as he said, the Sheikh said, he said he strengthened his arguments of misguidance by proofs which are either misunderstood or false. So he used false evidences even. False hadith or false evidence, uh, things made up, fabricated. So when he had finished, he had not really brought any proofs. All he used were weak and fabricated, fabricated, uh, fabricated uh, narrations and the sayings of the misguided people. So just stories. Beware of those people who just tell stories related to their dawah. So I got up and I said, as for me, you heard me say Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala said. And you heard me say the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. And I brought you the sayings of the well-known and respected scholars. I then said, did you hear, hear them use this? Did you hear him uh, bring any of these statements of the well-known and respected scholars saying that it's permissible to call on other than Allah? No, you did not. All you heard were weak and fabricated, fabricated narrations and the sayings of the people known to you. In any case, he stood up and he started insulting me. So I smiled at him and I did not insult him. And I said, may Allah reward you, may Allah bless you, and I left. Look at this. That was great hikmah from the Shaykh. May Allah reward him and bless him uh, and, and, and cure him. And illustrating the importance of that wisdom and dawah. And that using the proofs from Kitab wa Sunnah and the statements of well-known accepted scholars, especially if it's someone from Ahl Bidah, that you want to you want to have wisdom. You do want to invite them. It's not about insulting them. 
So when you refute someone, your point is not to refute them, to insult them, but it's to guide them. It's to guide them or refute their falsehoods so other people don't fall into it. So there's a, uh, it, it, you know, it's important to have these, uh, to have sincerity and to understand these uh, very important points. Then he said, by a law, than whom there is no other God, the next day the people in that town were saying in their masjid, in their masajid, more than one masjid, that they were saying in their market, Sufia has been defeated. The people themselves were saying, Sufia has been defeated. This was in the port of Sudan, Allahu Akbar. So this shows you, Habitifillah, that when you have wisdom and you have ilm, ilm and hikmah, and righteous preaching as Allah orders us to do in the Quran, that you can have success in your dawah. You can have a success in inviting people to good because they'll accept from you. And may Allah bless us to be of the people of khair and goodness. Then he said, so learn these ways or learn this way. The goal is that we gather the people to the truth. The goal is that we make the truth reach the hearts of the people. So use whatever you are able to from the legislated ways of giving dawah. The ways of the people of Bidah that are lies and beating around the bush and so on it's, are nothing to do with us. We are the people of honesty. We are the people of truth. We present the truth in its most beautiful form, a form which people will accept and which will have a good effect upon them. May Allah bless you. So that shows us the beauty of having wisdom in our dawah and that you should call the people with beautiful preaching, not insulting them, and even there's another wisdom in, in what the Sheikh said, and I, I've heard, I recall Sheikh Saleh, Saleh Suhaimi saying this in the Haram, in a Dars once, or and I can't recall if it was in the Haram or where he said it. I'm sure it was the Haram because that's where he usually teaches. And he said that, he said, I usually don't speak about particular individuals, you know, but I usually keep it general and talk about their mistakes in the Bidah itself. But he said in this case, he was talking about a famous da'i in, uh, in Egypt named Amr Khalid, who is well known, he's very ignorant, he's on television, and he's just an ignorant person who speaks about the religion and makes fatawa and, and, and so forth. So the sheikh said in this case it was necessary, he felt it was necessary to speak about that individual. So the wisdom there, and as Sheikh Rabi just laid out and what he did in Sudan illustrates for us, that sometimes, yes, there's a time to mention a specific individual. Sometimes you just refute that general bid'ah and those mistakes if, it's, if there's no benefit in mentioning that individual. If there's a benefit in mentioning Yasser Qadi, if there's a benefit in mentioning Nu'man Ali Khan, if there's a benefit in mentioning so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, then yes. But if there's no benefit, then it's not necessary. And I'm just throwing out those names for that for, as an illustration, but also because especially they're not on the minhaj of the Salaf. They're not on the minhaj of Kitab al-Sunnah, but they're on their own uh, various entertainment type dawahs and uh, as well as Yasir Qadi on, with a lot of compromise. So you have to look at the point is, is to have wisdom in dawah. And may Allah bless us with this wisdom. May Allah bless us with ilm al-nafiya, wa rizqin tayyibah, wa amal al-mutaqabbilin, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.